And there, there's no squabble among people. There's no trustees or staff parish or facility and finance or, staff or family and staff issues or, or budgets or buildings with roofs that leak or anything that God cannot deal with. He is exceedingly abundant through the power he lies in us. He gives to us. And so we do not have to be afraid. We have to recognize that God is in our midst and going to make a difference. And that's where God wants us to be. So how do we get rid of these cobwebs that get in our way? Well, the answer may be too simple for us. It is giving it over to God. It's when we lay our cobwebs at his feet that God makes a difference. First Peter 5 in the 6th verse and 7th verse, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on you, on him, because he cares for you. It's that simple. Give it to God. Isn't that too simple? Don't we want to earn it? Romans 8.1 says about guilt, there is now no condemnation for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. Our guilt was forgiven on the cross. And when we hold on to it, then we forget that Christ died for us. When we hold on to our guilt and we, and we take that, then the cross was wasted time. Because Christ died for our sins once and for all. Do you believe that? Well, that's a swipe. That takes care of that guilt. The pumpkin, the windshield, the whole thing is gone. And fear, Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Our fears are wiped away in faith. When we believe in Jesus Christ, that stuff gets out of our way. When you leave this place, don't and Jesus Christ has led been led to move in you, don't you feel like going and doing something sometimes? I wish you could hold on to that. That would be great, wouldn't it? Past hurts, Ephesians four thirty one in the message says, Make a clean break with all the cutting, backbiting, and profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. When we remember that Christ forgave us, our past hurts find forgiveness. When we remember that Christ, for all the stuff we did, even the pumpkin in the windshield, then we're ready to forgive other people. We're ready to make a difference. That's another cobweb swiped away. That's where God calls us to be. And that's where we want to be. My dad was kind of an old country boy. He grew up on, in the West Virginia, Ohio border and kind of nothing really seemed to bother him and every time those cobwebs when we were like he'd tell us to go get something and we're standing there kind of going in he would just kind of roll his eyes and he'd go over to the, pad, the walkway in between and just go and wipe them away just like they're just cobwebs they're nothing that has to have that effect on you and he would just shake his head over and over and just like when are you going to get it and once he did that, that passage was free to roam. It was open and ready to go for the day. For see, the problem is, overnight, those industrious spiders would be back at it. And the next day it was there again. And this is what happens in our lives, is that we, we come here and we say, yes, I know, I believe in Jesus Christ. I know he died for my sins. I, I've got it. But they start coming back, don't they? Well, here's the thing. We've got to continue to do this. 
We've got to lay them down at the cross. How many times, I know that you've done this, I've done it often, where I've had this guilt or I've had this thing, this cobweb in my way, and I've given it to God, and I thought, great, and I got about two feet from the cross, and I scooped it up again and started worrying again. Anybody do that? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I have good news. The more that we keep giving it back, Lord, I'm sorry, I picked that up again. The more that we give it back, the easier it gets. The more we swipe the cobwebs out of the way by letting Jesus Christ do that for us, the better it gets. And then we can make a difference. And we can go through the passage instead of going around in our life and letting that stuff... Because that's a crud, isn't it? The stuff in our past that blocks us, that's all crud. Nobody wants to walk through that. It's a dirty, it's untouchable stuff. That's where God wants us to be. And, and so we have to trust that God's going to do that. Letting go of the cobwebs, they return. Let God swipe them away again. Romans 7, 15 reminds us of this. I do not understand my own actions, for I do what I want. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And I think that's true with the things of the past. Our passage today told us not to look at the things in the past, right? But to put our eyes and to put our efforts and to put our hope on the future. That's where God calls us. This is crazy to live in this stuff. It's not what God wants us to do. Philippians says, Not that I've already obtained this or I've already reached the goal, but I press on to make it at my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. And when we remember that, we go right through that passageway. We're on our way, right? Let go of it. Again and again and again. We have to let go. When that unclean spirit, and it says in Luke 11, when that unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through the land. And what it says is if we don't let go and if we don't move on, it's coming right back to us, only worse. So let it go. Let God have it. God has already had it for us. Once you were in darkness, Ephesians 5, 8 says, and I feel like I'm right in the middle of that passage with the cobwebs around me. But now, you're the Lord, but now in the Lord you are the light. Live as children of the light. Jesus Christ is the great wiper of our cobwebs. And when you get to that point, when you're looking at the cobwebs, I think this passage says it best. This is Paul in Ephesians 3. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit. Not brute strength, but a glorious inner strength. That Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that both feet are planted firmly on love. Whoever calls, tell them that. That God is firmly involved in a part of it. And here's the good news. When we believe that, and the more we go there, the easier it gets. That's what God wants us to remember. Chip Ingram was one of the speakers at the conference I was at this week. And he talked about being all in. And being all in is about being all in Christians. You see, we say that we're Christians, and we say we're in. But are we all in? When it comes to the cobwebs, I surmise that we're not always there. But what he means by all in, he said, is when we surrender to Jesus Christ. That we forget about anything else but Jesus Christ. That we take those guilt and fears and past hurts and we give them to Christ and surrender. I tried to fix this and I can't. And when we do that, we have a glorious day ahead of us. Then we're all in. Then Jesus has a way to work with us. Because if we're only in part way, Jesus can't really work with us. But if we surrender all the past, all the clutter, all the things, we have a right way to go. And it's exciting and new. My dad and his cobwebs, man. The funniest thing about that is that they're... I am now the swiper. 
my dad has relived in me. If there's a cobweb, or worse yet, a spider, or a lizard, or anything else that doesn't belong, everyone comes to me, you know what I do? I go, and just wipe it away. That's because my dad taught me that over the years, that the people I love, I can do this, no problem. And I pray that we remember that's what Jesus is doing for us. It's time for us to clean house. We have so beautiful place to go. And I hope that this journey on Christ will be like Paul says, I press on to the prize, not through the roundabout way, but through Jesus Christ. It's time to clean. Don't let the past, none of that, don't let it do this to us. Let's go. Amen? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are a new creation.